Hi guys, my name is Kelvin Hollywood and the topic of this episode is setting up Photoshop and setting up a workspace in Photoshop. I can remember when I was opening uh, Photoshop the first time, I was like, whoa, so many tools, so many panels, what do I need? And in the next couple of minutes I will teach you um, how I set up a workspace, what kind of panels I use, what I need, and I will show you to personalize a little bit the shortcuts and the menu. So enjoy the next couple of minutes. All right, guys, let's get started. In this first episode, I'd like to show you a few things about setting up Photoshop. You can see here uh, my workspace. I'm a photographer, yeah, digital artist, retoucher. So um, your um, workspace can look different. Um, this is my workspace. And uh, sometimes I talk also about desktop. So workspace, desktop, that's the same for me. It's like at home when you are working on a, in an office or when you're working on your desktop. Um, I think it's not necessary to bring some items or things on the desktop, what you do never use. And most of the um, photographers and retouchers are uh, working with the workspace in Photoshop with a lot of panels, what they never touch. And I think that's not a good idea. You can see my workspace, or let's say my, my desktop here in Photoshop, um, well, it contains not so many panels, only the panels what I need all the time. And I like to show you now in this tutorial how to set up Photoshop um, step by step with all the panels and I like to um, tell you or show you a few things about some preferences and some uh, shortcuts. All right, let's get started. Let's create a blank new desktop or workspace by clicking here and then you can choose new workspace. You can also do that uh, here in the window. So I will call my new workspace, let's call it Kelvin on YouTube. All right, and my workspace should contain or contains all the keyboard shortcuts and all the menus. If I change something in the menu and in the shortcut, uh, it will be in this workspace. This is very important, so I click on this and I choose Save. All right, let's uh, create a blank new, or let's call that new workspace from scratch. That means let me delete everything what I have here. No panels anymore. Take a look, that's panel war. I call this panel war. And everywhere are panels. And the first time when you do this, well, it, it can drive you crazy. By the way, this is not a panel what is already in Photoshop. You can download it uh, at Adobe Exchange or I think it's on russellbrown.com. We do not need this. We do not need this. We do not need this. We, we need nothing, all right? I have now my picture and now I can set up all the panels what I need. You can find all the panel, panels here in window, under the menu window. Well, now it's a little bit difficult for me because I'm not uh, very familiar with this English version, but the first thing what I need are my tools. So let's choose the tools here because I'm working very often with these tools and I can't work without the tools. Sometimes I make this panel a little bit smaller um, when I'm working on my main computer, you can see here, it's a little bit tough for me because uh, I'm uh, doing a desktop recording in a smaller size uh, of the window. So um, I click on this little button and I think uh, the tools with the, yeah, this kind of style is better than this one. But uh, at my main computer, I have the long one here. All right. So the next window, what I need, uh, I mean, this is Photoshop. The Photoshop is all about layers. So I need my layers here. And I bring it here to the right side. And let's see what else I can use. Um, clone source, character styles. No, I'm not a designer. My brushes. Well, I do not need my brushes. If I need my brushes, I can type on that little button here. So I think what I need is the properties um, when I have uh, a mask or some adjustments and I need all my adjustment layers. Let's see where I can find all my adjustment layers. That's what I mean. It's a little bit hard for me um, here in uh, the English uh, version. Right here, adjustments. 
that are all my adjustment layers. So if I click on uh, one adjustment layers, I can see in my properties window, the adjustment layer, the curve, or yeah, it depends a little bit on what adjustment layer I have. But take a look at my, wor at my workspace right now. Um, it, it drives me crazy. Too many panels here in different positions, and I don't like to work like this. I'm more that guy, I, I'm that kind of guy who have all the tools, I have it on my left side, and all the other um, panels, I have it on the right side. But not split it here, I like to have everything together. So first of all, um, the properties have something to do with adjustments. So I like to bring the properties here right into the adjustments. You can see it, if you move it here, you can see that blue line and you can see that frame. And, and if the frame is blue, um, you can bring it here inside. So let's bring it here on top. And I like, I like to connect the layers panel here. I don't like to bring it inside. I like to bring it just on that panel, if, the, if you can see a blue line here. And now everything here is together. And that's the way how I work. You can make everything here a little bit bigger if you need it. And you can also, by right-clicking here on an icon, you can make that icon a little bit smaller. I have it large here for my tutorials, but you can also choose here smaller thumbnails, and then you will have a little bit more space. All right, and this is it. I mean, I do not work much with channels or a path. Okay, channels sometimes. So let's choose uh, the window channels here, and... Let's bring it in here to the layers because most of the time when I use channels, it has something to do with the layers. And uh, I think I'm happy right now. But take your time. Take a look what uh, kind of windows do you need and then bring it in. Bring it in uh, maybe to the adjustments or to the layers. It's up to you. I'm more that guy. I don't like to have much panels on my desktop. If I have too much panels, it drives me crazy and I do not have fun to retouch. It's like at home when I'm sitting on a table, if there are too many items, ah, well, that drives me crazy and I don't like to work. All right? And uh, the coolest thing is you can create more workspaces. That means um, maybe this one is a workspace when you do some retouching of images. If you maybe do some designing, you can create your new workspace with another panels so it's up to you or if you have to extract a model from uh, the background choose maybe a workspace extracting or uh, a workspace compositing so it's up to you what you have to do is you have to practice a little bit with these workspaces or with these panels because sometimes it looks everything crazy but with a little practice you can see you can drag and drop all the panels here and it's yeah it's very easy all right, this was the first step, setting up the workspace. Now you have your panels, now you can work. Another thing is maybe I prefer here a dark gray background. It depends a little bit on what version do you use in Photoshop, but in most of the versions you can just right click here and then you can choose your color. You can also choose a selective uh, or a custom color. Maybe you like to have a workspace like this, but um, I don't like this one. So I'm choosing a dark gray. If you have a white background here, most of your images here look darker than they are. If you have a dark background, a black background, your images look a little bit brighter. So I recommend a darker gray. A darker gray is very nice. Um, yeah, and the images then looks uh, very normal. So I'm choosing dark gray. Many people are also choosing uh, a, a middle gray so or a lighter gray. Well, it's up to you. Give them a try. All right, so we have the workspace. Now let's uh, get into the menu here in the filters. You can see here I have a lot of colors inside and I do not have... Uh, all the filters inside when I open my fil my filter menu here. Uh, it's the same here. If I go to image adjustments, you can see uh, there are not all the adjustments inside. If I click on the last button here, you can see I have all my adjustments here, like auto tone, auto con. I never use this. I mean, Photoshop is a very, very big and huge program. 
but you do not need every filter. I'd like to show you now how you can hide some filters and how you can colorize some filters. The point is, let me duplicate the layer and let's say I like to sharpen this image. And with my old workspace, it was like this. So imagine there are no colors here. I was looking for my sharpening uh, filter and, and it was like this. Uh, where is sharpen? Where is sharpen? Oh, here is sharpen and then unsharp mess. Oh, here it is. Oh, oh, that was wrong. This was the old way with my old workspace. But here with my colored menu, I'm very fast in picking uh, my uh, adjustments or my tools or my filters, what I use very often. Maybe it, on the, this stage it's a little bit too early for you to figure out what kind of filters or tools do you need often, but uh, i like to explain it in this video how to set this up and then you can later change it whenever you like. All right. So to change this you have to go to edit and then you have to go here to menus and right here you are able to uh, change the panel menus or the application menus. I'm working right now on the application menus and let's say um, you like to change your filter and you can see here I do not need the lens correction filter so I hide this filter by clicking on that icon. If you can see the eye icon you will see the filter. If you will not see the eye icon you will not see the filter. And now it's up to you. Um, you can uh, click on every command or every um, filter or menu what you can see here on top. It takes a while, maybe you need 10 or 15 minutes to set up everything. You can also give some uh, filter a color. I often use the blur tool and then uh, I often use the Gaussian blur. So I uh, change the color to green. You do not have so many colors. I choose green for Gaussian blur and if I like to blur an image I have my Gaussian blur and it's very fast. I do not have to search and I can spend a lot of time. All right, that was about the menus. Now, something about the shortcuts. Well, I do not uh, use shortcuts very often because I'm an instructor. I have to make everything a little bit more visual, but sometimes it's good to have a shortcut. And if you are not an instructor, work with shortcuts. It helps you a lot and it saves a lot of time. So you can change all the shortcuts by uh, clicking on the edit to the uh, keyboard shortcuts menu here. And all you have to do is you have to choose your tool, maybe a tool what you use very often. Let's say I'm using very often the dodge and the burn tool. So here is at the moment the uh, shortcut O. And if you uh, start Photoshop, the sponge tool, so oh, it's O, not a zero, the sponge tool have that O shortcut as well. But I never used the sponge tool. So what I did is I was deleting the sponge tool. And that shows you, you, you can change everything. I mean, if you like to have the dodge tool with the shortcut D, then choose D. Let me show you this. If I press O right now, you can see I can switch between the dodging and the burning tool and I have uh, no sponge tool inside. But this will not work when you start Photoshop the first time. You have to do one more thing. You have to go to Photoshop, to the preferences, general, and right here you have to click on that little button here, use shift key for tool switch. Make sure you do not have uh, the uh, mark inside here because then you have to press every time the shift key for a tool switch and I hate to press the shift key because then I, most of the time I need two hands. So right now I can press my O key, I do not have to press my shift and the O key. I recommend that you um, uh, go through all the shortcuts and create your own shortcuts and uh, try to figure out what shortcuts make sense to you and uh, how many shortcuts do you like to um, choose or yeah use. Another uh, tips or another few tips about the preferences. Um, I already showed you um, to uh, click on that uh, yeah on that 
function or that command that you do not need the um, tool switch or the shift key. Uh, here are a few more tips. What is maybe sometimes very interesting. Um, I use a, a font size, a larger font size in the user interface. I know many of you guys are very young people, but maybe there are also a, a few older people there who can't see everything so good or maybe you have a big, big screen. I recommend to change the um, font size of the user interface to large and then everything is a little bit bigger and you can read it a little bit better. This is something what I did um, very early when I was working with Photoshop and uh, yeah, I like it. Um, I, well, in this video I like to give you a little bit kind of a best of. I can't explain you everything. I can't explain you everything about file handling, performance. I have it on 80%. There are so many things to explain, but that makes you maybe a little bit crazy when you like to work with Photoshop. And this project, this Photoshopping is easy project, and, and especially this first video is more of what you need. You do not need everything at the beginning. So I don't like to explain you the rest. I like to explain you the most important things, and now you can work. You know now how to set up your workspace, your panels. You know how to do a little bit of changes and preferences if you like, but the most important thing is to bring all your panels on your desktop and maybe you like to change your menu a little bit that you are a little bit faster and that you are feeling a little bit more comfortable. All right, this was the first episode and I hope you like it. All right, guys, I hope you learned a few new things and uh, I hope you now know how to set up a workspace and to change the menu a little bit, that you feel a little bit more comfortable with Photoshop. And if this video will get 2000 views, I will upload the next video. So feel free to share this video, to recommend this video, to post this video. And if we have uh, 2000 views, uh, my next video will go online. So, see you in the next video.